So um, I, a show of hands here, and I, I think I'll, I know what the answer is, but who, uh, who in the room is familiar with the Enron story? Yes. Um, so I think you, you, know, um, you, you, you know the story of Enron, but I'll just give you a quick uh, backgrounder. It's uh, one of the best known cases of willful corporate fraud and corruption. It was really truly the ultimate in unethical conduct. Um, Enron was an American energy company based in Houston, Texas. At one time, it was one of the largest energy companies in the world. Before its bankruptcy in 2001, Enron employed approximately 20,000 people and had stated revenues, <laughs> to clarify, of about $100 billion. That's about four times the size of TD Bank's revenue line. Uh, but at the end of 2001, it was revealed that Enron's financial condition was a subject of a creatively planned and executed accounting fraud. It was, uh, it was a house of cards. Enron since has become the poster child for willful corporate fraud and corruption. Really, again, the ultimate and un 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 unethical behavior. Uh, the scandal also brought into question the accounting practices and activities of many corporations in the United States and was, in a, was a factor in the creation of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, Sarbanes Act of 2002, uh, the act to find a code of ethics to promote proper behavior. It also made the CEO and CFO directly accountable and forced them to personally certify the fair representation or for, fair presentation of the financial statements and financial and that financial controls are effective. If there is a misrepresentation, it can lead to criminal charges with fines and imprisonment. So given that I personally certify TD's financial statements on a quarterly basis, I do take this very seriously, especially since I don't think I'd look very good in a bright orange jumpsuit. <laughs> but the picture that, that emerges of Enron is that of an out of control corporate culture with weak leadership that ignored the basic principles of business, allowing it to be manipulated by greedy executives for their own personal gain. Remember, we're going to come back to the themes of culture and leadership. So the focus on, at Enron was on reporting profits rather than actually making money. Enron's business losses were masked by accounting tricks, and of course every, everything eventually collapsed. The Enron scandal also affected the larger business world and the accounting community and created the collapse of Arthur Anderson, which was one of the large accounting firms at the time. So there was a book written about Enron. Uh, some of you may have read it. Um, it was called The Conspiracy of Fools. And Enron's chief financial officer, a guy named Andy Fastow, is depicted as voraciously greedy, using complex financial structures, paying himself huge fees, all the while cooking Enron's books to show fictitious profits. I remember reading the book about 10 years ago. And it didn't read like a boring book about accounting fraud. It had all the elements of a thriller and a tragedy. I'll admit to you here tonight, I actually cried when I finished reading that book because the actions of a few destroyed the lives of so many people and completely destroyed their wealth. So you'll be glad to know that Andy Fastow has been in jail now for many years. I wonder how he's enjoying his bright orange jumpsuit. Here's an interesting uh, part of the story and, and part of actually what brought Enron down. A journalist was studying the Enron story and the company's spectacular results. And one day she went to Andy Fastow and said, I don't understand how you make money. Can you please explain it to me? Fastow said, sure. Um, he'd, come, he'd get back to her um, and they'd have a meeting. So he caucused with his uh, cronies and uh, they just they tried to figure out how were they going to explain the black box uh, of their, you know, of all of this accounting to these, um, uh, to this journalist, and they they, uh, they they came up with an, a story, and they flew to New York City uh, to visit her. After the meeting, as they were leaving the room, as they were filing out of the room, Andy Fastow hung back a little bit, and he said to her, "I don't care what you write, just don't make me look bad." And again, we'll come back to the story because there is a moral to the story. Uh, that I think can apply to all of us and all of you as you think about uh, your careers. More recently, Lance Armstrong opened up to Oprah that he'd been taking performance-enhancing drugs. When he was asked whether he thought he cheated, he said, the definition of a cheater 
is someone who's, uh, who, uh, who cheats to gain a, an advantage over a rival or foe. Since everyone else was doing it, he viewed taking drugs as simply leveling the playing field and hence not cheating. And of course we know uh, he lied for many, many years about it. So just because others are doing something uh, doesn't give you an excuse. It can never be an excuse. The ultimate test of an organization's culture is will people do the right thing when no one is watching? For example, you're writing a final exam and the exam monitor steps out of the room. Most people, the clear majority of people, will keep on, they'll, they'll write the exam, but there may be someone who's tempted to look at someone else's exam or pull out their iPhone uh, to get the right answer. If you saw someone else cheating um, in that situation, what would you do? Uh, would you let the exam monitor know? There have been many, many frauds that have grown to become very significant because people were afraid to come forward. Now you may say to me, Colleen, you've outlined some extreme stories here of unethical behavior. We know about all of these. Will any of us ever face something in our career, such a stark contrast between good and bad? I think what I'd like to do, though, is talk a little bit about human nature. It really is what it, it all comes down to when you think about why some of these things happen. And put this in the context of, of corporate life and how this can create um, perhaps some of the preconditions where uh, people will act in an unethical way. I think we all know that a career is one of the central pillars of our lives. We all want to succeed in our careers. I know that all of you do. It gives us status, it gives us a livelihood, financial security, and it becomes really a part of our reputation. Succeeding in business, though, isn't just about your skills and experience and your talent. It is about working with people. And we all want people to like us. We want to fit in. We want to be respected. This is, again, it's all human nature. So don't ever underestimate people's desire to belong and to fit in. You know, for years at TD, uh, we've done employment equity surveys. And our payroll system identifies whether you're a man or a woman. But for a lot of other diversity categories, people need to self-declare. At TD, we really focus on diversity and inclusiveness. It's really a business imperative for us. So people are now feeling more comfortable self-identifying that they're gay or lesbian, that they have a disability, or in fact that they're of Aboriginal descent. So you pause and say, why wouldn't people um, in the past uh, self-identify in those categories? Again, people want to fit in. You know, for many years, people didn't want to be different. What I can tell you at TD is that we respect and value differences. We promote inclusion. We want people to bring their whole self to work. When people ask me what it takes to succeed in business, uh, they're always looking for that silver bullet. And I'll probably disappoint you when I say, my advice is always this, be yourself, but be your best self. So at TD, we do strive to build a culture um, and, and we try to nurture people. We nurture a unique and inclusive environment. And people are noticing. TD is consistently ranked as one of the top employers in Canada. Some of you in this room tonight may join TD uh, at some point, and I certainly hope that that is the case. Let me ask you, if you were uh, starting your own company, how would you make sure that you're running a highly ethical organization? Just think about it, you're starting from scratch. I think most people would say, well, I'd hire honest, ethical people who are capable and confident. I'd create an open, transparent environment where everyone can speak their mind. I'd want people to under, understand my values, it's my business now, because what my employees do reflects on me. And I'd need to be a role model myself. And on all of this, you'd be right. When I asked my daughter about the speech on business ethics, uh, she did have some tips on how to include the Kardashians uh, in the speech, but I decided to forego that. But she also had another uh, memory. She's a big uh, aficionado of the show, The Office. And she immediately started talking about an episode of The Office where Michael, if anyone knows the, uh, the, the, uh, the storyline, uh, had an ethics training session um, at the company. So everyone had headbands on and started singing, Let's Get Ethical to the tune of Let's Get Physical, uh, Olivia Newton-John's uh, famous song. 
So that would be one way of getting the message across, I guess. Uh, but I think we can all agree that strong leadership and a great culture really are uh, the, the foundation of an ethical organization. Uh, so let me tell you about TD's leadership values, and these values are very enduring. Uh, they were put in place about, uh, about seven or eight years ago, and in fact our CEO Ed Clark was personally involved in articulating what truly matters to us um, as leaders and what those values are and how we describe them to people in the organization so that they're not abstract. And we have seven leadership uh, values or principles. The first one is our leaders are expected to make an impact, to get things done, to outperform. The second one is build for the future. Have a vision, be proactive in implementing that vision. Hire the best people, always think ahead in terms of how you can make the bank a success. Inspire the will to win is number three. That's about having a passion for the business, attracting and retaining great people. That's our motto every single day, is we hire the best people and we help make them their best. That is the key to success, no, no exceptions. Bring out the best in individuals and teams and have fun doing it. Show perseverance and resilience in bad times. And I can tell you, having lived through the financial crisis, um, it does test your character. And part of that is, is care about people. Work effectively in teams. Be driven to win for the TD team. Make things happen by leveraging your partners. Use positive influence, not power, to get things done. Show trust in your business partners. I think the one that really stands out for me is live transparency. Leaders at, at TD live transparency by, uh, by showing respect for others, speaking candidly but with respect, not rounding corners as my boss would say, deal straight on with issues, respecting different views, we talked about diversity, being grounded, authentic, genuine and not taking yourself too seriously. I think authenticity is probably one of the most important qualities that you can have as a leader. It's one of the best compliments, I must say, I ever get from people, is when someone will say to me, you know, gosh, I knew you 30 years ago and you haven't changed a bit. Or people say, well, you're so approachable. That to me is about authenticity. It's about being real. I mean, maybe back in the, in the old days, I could come up here and present an image of who I am, but you know, we're in a, we live in a world of uh, real-time information. You can check me out any which way. Um, so people, you, you know who's real out there and who isn't. Part of, about living transparency is personally wearing problems. It's not always somebody else's issue. Um, and I find in a healthy, uh, in a good organization, in my case TD, it's great to be able to go in and talk to my boss and not always be beating my chest to sort of say this is what's gone so well, but to go in and say here's what didn't go so well, um, here's what I could have done better. And it's so wonderful then to be able to get his coaching and not be judged to sort of say, well, gosh, uh, gee, you're not as great as I thought you were, but actually to make you better. Isn't that what it's all about at the end of the day? You know, again, in a large organization like TD or others, you know, things aren't going to go perfectly all the time. We accept that. You know, in fact, we always say there's something bad going on in our organization every single day. But transparency is so important in terms of making sure that those issues can come forward and that people feel comfortable uh, escalating those issues and not feeling that they're going to be punished. Um, in my view, it isn't a crime to come bring an issue forward. The issue is if you don't solve it, um, if you don't make it happen, and, and really doing that in a constructive way. So you need to create a comfortable environment where people really can uh, bring issues forward. That is so important to me um, in my role as CFO of the bank. I need people to feel that if there's an issue or a problem, they can let me know, they can let their boss know. Uh, we absolutely have to uh, create that environment. It's so, so critical. 